Hi, I'm Eric Price, and I helped develop the amazing Luminoc, and I want to help you make more money with my product. Take a few minutes to watch this DVD, and I'm going to demonstrate the simple procedures that you can do and share with your customers to help them get the most out of the money that they spend on my product. We use tried and true knocks from the industry that have been in use for, by archers for years. Uh, the fact that a knock doesn't fit an arrow properly is a result of two things. Tolerance in the arrow and tolerance in a knock. Let's face it, everything has tolerance. All arrows are not created equally. And if your Luminoc fits too loosely in your shaft, all is not lost, that, that Luminoc can be shimmed to function properly. If you can press a Luminoc against the palm of your hand and make it light, it's simply too loose. It's not likely to stay on during flight or after impact. So what we recommend in the instructions is that a small sliver of the instructions be cut about an eighth of an inch wide and used as a shim. I'm going to position half of that shim in the arrow and then I'm going to install my Luminoc making sure that that shim is not going to interfere with either of the contacts. As I start the Luminoc in, I let loose of that shim and let it follow the Luminoc into position. I tear off the excess shim and the Luminoc now fits tightly and has the best chance of staying on when it hits a hard object. If your Luminox fit too tight, you can fix that too by trimming the set, which is a raised line along the shank of the knock. Simply use a very sharp knife to shave off that set and then test it in your arrow to see, that it, see if it fits. And it's important that you get the proper Luminoc for the right arrow. And those are all listed on the backs of the packages. Uh, there are four sizes of knocks. Uh, 245 knock is the most common, fits most of the arrows. It's our signature knock. The 246 knock is our GT knock, fits gold tip arrows, a 246. And our Luminoc X fits an arrow that accepts a 205 diameter knock. And our Luminoc H fits arrows that accept 233 diameter knocks. So once you've established that you have the proper Luminoc and you get it home and start to apply it to your arrow, first thing you need to do is read the instructions. Now what the first instruction asks you to do is to test that Luminoc outside of the shaft. That does two things. It shows you that the Luminoc does work and it also shows you that how it works. The Luminoc is just a wire and an LED and a battery arranged in an open circuit. There are two contacts at the shoulders of a signature knock and when they touch something conductive like this material in, the, in a paper clip, it causes it to light. And that's what we want to make sure that your arrow is equipped to do. Carbon arrows, all carbon arrows, are very conductive and it's, it, while it's important that they be square on the back, it's also important that they be free of any non-conductive material. Achieving a dead square end on the end of a flat shaft is really very easy using our fast tool. You locate your arrow in a V-notch and rotate the end of the arrow against an abrasive disc. This effectively squares the end of the shaft, providing a dead square surface for the Luminox contacts to touch, and it works every time. By fitting tight, it will ensure that the Luminox contacts will stay in concert with the back of the shaft. To turn a Luminox off, 
It's important to grasp the luminoc where it, jo where it meets the back of the shaft. Feel for the contacts and grasp the luminoc across its widest point. Grasp the arrow and then push it out with your thumb just slightly. Now upon the next shot, the luminoc will be pushed against the end of the shaft by the string and it will come on and stay on during flight. Once again to turn it off, you grasp it and rock it and push it back at the same time. The Luminoc signature in the Luminoc GT has a replaceable battery today. You'll be able to tell that by looking at the shank of the knock and you'll see that there's a black O-ring visible through the shank of the knock. If you've determined that you need to change the battery in your Luminoc, you need to unwrap this wire that's loosely wrapped around the battery, straighten it out, and fold it back over the contact that it forms. This ensures that when you go back in with the battery, it's not going to get tangled up. You'll grab the battery and pull it straight out as you twist it and you'll see that the o-ring will come with it. You're going to remove that o-ring and reuse it. You're going to put that on the new battery. Just as such. And then with a little saliva, just slightly uh, wet it to lubricate it. Now as it goes back in, hold that wire steady, twist it and push it until it's all the way in. And use that wire to reach around to the opposite contact to make sure that you've made the connection. Once you've gotten to this point, You'll simply wrap that wire back around the battery, not around the shank, but around the battery, to tuck it out of the way. Then you're ready to put your Luminoc back into service, and it'll be bright as the day you bought it. The battery in a Luminoc X and Luminoc H is fully exposed. It's held in place by a small nylon strap. Remove the battery, you just pull it straight out. It's connected at the pin in a receiver. Select a new battery, put it back in the knock the, way the, the same way the old one came out, and then to test that your uh, installation was correct, use a conductor of some sort. I'm using a piece of, well, I'm actually using a paper clip. It's made of conductive metal. Touch the battery case and then the contact at the shoulder of the knock and it lights. This tells me that my battery installation was successful and I can put it back in my arrow and put it back into service. Not all arrows are created equal. In this particular instance I've selected a carbon wrapped shaft that is made with a fair amount of fiberglass on the inside. Now the problem that that creates for the Luminoc is that fiberglass is not conductive. So I'm going to prepare this arrow for the Luminoc to function properly. I'm going to use a piece of emery cloth, about 120 grit. I'm going to make a shallow cone by tearing the cloth and wrapping it together. That makes a shallow cone that I will use effectively not only to chamfer the arrow, but also to determine that that material that I'm taking off is not carbon. Carbon, you see, comes off black. Now you can see I'm getting some black around the edge, so I know I've done that enough. Now I'm going to flatten the paper, and I'm going to push the end of that shaft against it, and give it about a half a turn. And you see what's left is just a ring of black carbon. What that's going to do for me 
is it's going to present just that black carbon to the contacts of the knock so that it's going to work every time just the way it's supposed to. Some arrows today are equipped with aluminum bushings on the back. And while aluminum is conductive, the coating that they put on it is not. And Aluminoc will work very well with this, but you have to make sure that you remove the coating from the end of that bushing or the end of that collar. And you do that by simply using a, an abrasive, drag that rear surface against a piece of emery cloth or a sharpening stone until a bare aluminum surface is exposed. Then the Luminoc will operate in that collar. I also recommend that you use a dot of super glue right here where the collar rests and glue that in place to ensure that it doesn't move back and forth during aeroflight. Well, I'm Eric Price, and I hope these simple tips will help you help your customers be successful with Illuminoc. Made in America, we stand by it 100%. And as always, if you have trouble with these things, visit our website's how-to page at www.luminoc.net. And if you have any questions, just call us, our number's on every package. Till then, light them up.